I recently did a modification to my RadioMaster Boxer where I changed the antenna, the regular antenna that you have, which is a little bit long, for a very, very small and thin or flat antenna that you could have all the time on the radio and will make your life much easier when you are transporting that radio and put it inside a bag or something like that. But some people pointed out that to do that mod, you actually have to open the radio and, you know, not everyone is okay with that idea. So I went back to the designing table and trying to figure it out. What can I do to have a similar experience and have a similar result, but without having to open the radio? And I came up with this idea. I created a new antenna, which is basically the same happy model antenna that I've been using in the other project, but to change the connector. Normally these antennas come with an UFL connector and what I did was to replace that with an RPSMA, which is what the radio needs. This way you can just screw a new antenna, which in this case is 90 degrees, and you can have a TPU part covering these and then try to make the same effect that I had with the other modification that I did. If you want to see the modification that I'm talking about or that I'm referring to, Look at the description of this video, I'm going to have a link there or just check in the North FPV channel, you're going to find it in there. So as you can imagine, the difficult part of this modification is actually to create this antenna. You have to cut the normal antenna, and then solder this 90 degrees RPSMA part, which by the way, it was kind of like the most difficult part of this modification was to find this RPSMA connector. Here in Sweden, I could find SMA, but not RPSMA. So I had to order it from AliExpress. I'm going to have the link also in the description of the video. So if you need it, you can have it. But I guess that the result of finding this will depend a lot on your own country and where you're located. But for me, it was complicated to get this. So the process is like this. You have your antenna, a regular Express LRS antenna. You cut the connector, the UFL connector, and then you have to peel, you have to remove the outside cable to expose both the negative part of the antenna and the positive part of the antenna. The best way that I found that you can do this to expose the cables was using a very sharp knife and try to push against my ESD carpet, which is also a little bit flexible, and rotate the cable so you could kind of cut. And then with your hands or with your nails maybe, you can pull that cable carefully. You have to be careful because these antennas are not very strong and you can break them very easily if you try to push or try to pull too hard. At this point it was difficult to see what I was doing and I used my microscope to make sure that when I was inserting the antenna that I had just peeled into the connector, everything was uh, in the right place. You're going to have to solder the inside so it's on, in the right place and it doesn't move around or anything. The same with the outside, you can solder the negative part to the outside of the connector and I'm using a shrink tube to cover everything and make it look nice and professional. Now that we have this new antenna what we need to do is to 3D print a part which is going to be covering the whole thing and not letting things exposed that can break. In the beginning my idea was to do something very thin like this one that you see here so it could be as flat as possible to the top but the big problem is this 90 degrees RPSMA connector is actually pretty big and when even, even when you screw it in the radio you have a lot that is exposed which means that I had to go with a much thicker part it ended up being a bit thicker than what I wanted but again if you insert everything correctly you end up with very little left if you ask me, I rather have the first mod that I had, the one that is very, very small and very flat to the, to the top of the radio. 
but again I understand that not everyone wants to open the radio and this could be something that you can have and still throw your radio in the bag without any problem. I have to also mention that there is no real easy way to test if the antenna has been soldered correctly without some advanced devices that I don't own and I'm most probably you don't own either. So if you want to make sure that everything is right, I would recommend that before starting to do all this, you test the range of your radio with your regular antenna, let's say inside your house or something, you set it up to the 25 milliwatts, for example, and you leave the drone or an express LRS receiver on your table and you walk. And whenever you start seeing that the, the signal goes down, the signal bars goes down, you remember that area, you mark that area. And when you do this antenna, and you replace it, you try to replicate this and see if you have the same range. If the antenna is not done correctly, if something went wrong and you are either not, uh, not doing contact or either crossing the cables or something, that range is going to be, that range is gonna decrease quite quickly. So you're gonna see a difference quite soon when you are doing this kind of test. That's the only way that I have that I can think about to test this and make sure that whatever you did was correctly without having to use any kind of device that you might not have or that might be even more expensive than the radio itself. Now you have an antenna, easy to install, no need to open the radio, a little bit flatter than the original one. Uh, Something cool to try these days that uh, you might not be able to fly that much as I am because it's winter and it's cold and it's dark outside. I hope you enjoy doing this modification. If you did, please leave a like, comment on this video. That's the way that you can help us create more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and see you soon.